Hey, what up? It's EOB celebrating a big night of heavyweights at UFC 146. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. So what did we learn? We learned a number of things. Number one, Junior Dos Santos makes it look easy. Let's not forget that Frank Mir has held the belt not once, but twice. And JDS made him, well, fight a fight that he really shouldn't have fought. Uh, who thought that Mir was going to take one shot at a takedown, try and do a toehold, and that was going to be the end of it, and he was going to get into a kickboxing match with Junior Dos Santos and get ended in Babe Ruth fashion because JDS said second round KO, he got a second round KO. Nice night, and we immediately get Kane and JDS too, which I think all of us are excited to see, especially after Kane's destruction of Bigfoot Silva. <laughs> Now that destruction is on the heels of the worst refing in Josh Rosenthal's career. That was just terrible. Bigfoot is choking on his own blood. He can't see anything. He's taking hammer fist after hammer fist. It was terrible. Terrible stoppage. And uh, a mar on the night. Not the worst mar on the night. That belongs to C.B. Dalloway and Mayhem Miller. Afterwards, C.B. Dalloway looks like a loser by winning, and Mayhem Miller got fired for some either before fight or after fight shenanigans, and he said yesterday on the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani that he has retired from the sport. <laughs> Now, Dana White might not be a big Roy Nelson fan for either his mullet, his crazy beard, or his out-of-shapeliness, if that's a word, but you can't deny the fact that that right out of nowhere ending Dave Pee Wee Herman's night was a big, big statement from Roy Nelson. He looks great. And yesterday on Twitter, there was uh, the buzz about Brock Lesnar being in the building, the buzz about Brock Lesnar meeting with Dana White. That meeting didn't go so well, but if he comes back, Nelson has said that's a fight he wants, and as a fan, that's a fight I want to see. Stipe Miocic, he welcomed Shane Del Rosario to the UFC in a way that only Stipe can. Now, Stipe really needs to work on uh, uh, this sort of thing. He's not very good at protecting himself. He took a lot of shots he didn't really need to. However, he was able to get into the ground with his wrestling and end Del Rosario's night. He is a guy who is quietly 3-0 in the UFC and a dangerous dude in the heavyweight division. This was a night of big surprises, and let's not forget that Alistair Overeem was supposed to be on this card, and uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that didn't really miss him on Saturday night. <laughs> Kicking off the card was LeVar Johnson and Stefan Struve, and everybody knew, including LeVar Johnson, what Stefan Struve had to do to end the train that was LeVar Johnson's run in the UFC. He had been knocking people out like it was his job. Well, that's mostly because it was his job or still is his job. Well, actually, his job right now is to learn jiu-jitsu because his jiu-jitsu is terrible. Stefan Struve pulled guard. When do you see that happening? He pulls guard and ends the night, picks up submission of the night, along with Paul Sass, who also uh, submitted in a very gorgeous triangle over uh, Christmas, Jacob Volkman. Great fight if you missed it on the prelims. So two submissions of the night, Stefan Struve and Paul Sass. Couple things before we take off. If you missed the prelims before the prelims on Facebook, you missed the debut of Glover Teixeira, a guy that a lot of people have been looking forward to see in the UFC, and he did not disappoint. His dismantling of Kyle Kingsbury made it look like Kyle had never fought a day in the UFC, let alone in MMA. And me, for one, I've already bought my John Jones Glover Teixeira title fight at UFC 163 t-shirts. You can get them on eBay right now. Also, Mayhem Miller unceremoniously fired. We talked about that. Brock Lesnar met with Dana White. Didn't go so well. And Jamie Varner is back. If you missed that, he actually beat Edson Barboza and made somebody who bet on him a ton of money because nobody thought that was going to happen. A great, great fight. Glad to see Varner back. What a great fight between those two guys. Edson's going to come back better than ever, and it's nice to have Varner back in the fold. On Friday, we get the Ultimate Fighter finale. That will happen as Martin Campman and Jake Ellenberg. What a great fight that's going to be. We'll cover all of that and more. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Just search WOW Show. Talk to you soon.